we're going to talk here about two different ways to organize or show a set of numbers. The first way we're going to talk about is set builder notation. Um, you guys had a little bit of exposure to this in the handout that you read about sets. Um, I gave a couple examples of set builder notation, and after each of them, um, I expressed what that meant in turn, with, kind of um, without the math symbols, just if you were just reading it, how it would be read. So now we're going to get a little bit deeper with it, and you guys are going to actually um, create your own set builder notations given a set of numbers. So remember, it's the description of the variable you're using. So I'm using the variable x. This, remember, means such that. All my x's are in between negative 3 and 16. Remember, z means integers, so all my x's are from the integer set. So no fractions, no decimals, um, just um, positive and negative whole numbers between negative 3 and 16. I'm going to come back to interval notation. First, I want to look at a couple examples with set builder notation. So if I look at example 1 here, I'm asked to rewrite this in set builder notation or use set builder notation to describe this set. So I'm going to say the set s is all variables, so let's say I call my variables x, such that it looks to me that x starts at negative 2 and continues to go up. This dot, dot, dot means it keeps going. So it looks like I'm going to have all x values greater than or equal to negative 2, and it looks like my x values are coming from the integer set, because again, I have positive and negative whole numbers, no decimals, no fractions, and I do apologize because my negative 2 looks like a Z. That is set builder notation. So again, all X values such that I could have picked any letter, I didn't have to pick X, but X is less than or equal to negative 2, or excuse me, X is greater than or equal to negative 2, and X is coming from my integer set. If I do the same thing with example 2, now I have all multiples of 4. So now my set is going to be all x's such that, well, how do I get multiples of 4? Well, 4 times 0 gives me 0 as a multiple of 4. So if I think about my set a little bit, 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 3 is 12, 4 times 4 is 16. So it looks like I'm multiplying 4 by different, variable, or by different numbers, starting at number zero. Four times zero, four times one, four times two, four times three, four times four, four times five, so on and so on. So it sounds like my variables are coming from my whole number set. Remember whole number and natural are very similar, but whole number includes zero where natural doesn't. So all x values such that I'm multiplying my x values by four and the x values I'm choosing are from the whole number set. That is my set builder notation. The other notation is this interval notation. Interval notation gets used all the time in calculus. Um, what we do with interval notation is we take um, something that would typically be expressed as an inequality and we put it in brackets or in parentheses or a combination of bracket and parentheses. Um, one of the difficult things with interval notation is it does look like sometimes you're writing a point but based on the context of the problem that you're given the information in, you need to be able to determine, are they giving me a point or are they giving me interval notation? Um, you'll, as you get exposed to interval notation more, you'll see it's fairly easy. Um, right now, we're not going to be as focused about um, interpreting it in a, in a problem as we are going to be about just being able to convert and write things in interval notation, and then we'll move to recognizing it. So big thing to remember with interval notation is that if I would normally use greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, I want to use a bracket. If I would normally use less than or greater than, I want to use a parenthesis. If I'm expressing infinity, I have to use a parenthesis. What I mean by infinity is if I had a situation like this where I'm saying x is greater than or equal to negative 2, I would want to say I start at negative 2, I go up to infinity. So notice I chose to use a bracket with negative 2 because it's greater than or equal to, and then I go all the way up to infinity, I have to use a parenthesis with infinity. So I'm gonna move my screen down, so I'm gonna lose, I'm gonna lose this, but you can still have it on your notes, um, and I'm going to look at three examples with interval notation. So on the first one, I want x values between negative two and 17, so how do I show that? I show that by saying I start at negative two, I use a parenthesis because it's less than, I go up to 17, I use a bracket. So, do you see how, if this had been a parenthesis, it could look like a point? On example two, I'm less than negative 12 or I'm greater than 5. 
So I either go from negative infinity up to negative 12. Again, I'm using parentheses. Or, so unioned with, because it can be an either one, I start at 5 and I go up to infinity. So again, just a way of writing inequalities in a different notation. Um, and then find the example 3, all real numbers except x cannot equal negative 2. Oh, I couldn't get the cannot equal sign to, to um, go in, so I had to write that in. So x cannot equal negative 2. So all real numbers except x cannot be negative 2. So if I wanted to show what that looked like, I'm going to start at negative infinity. I'm going to go up to negative 2, but because I'm going to use a parenthesis instead of a bracket, that means negative 2 is not included in my set. I get really, really close to negative 2, but I don't actually get there. Union with going from negative 2 up to infinity. Again, these brackets are going to, are these, excuse me, parentheses symbolize that I get super close. I can get infinitely close to negative 2. I can go to negative 1.9999999. But I'm never going to actually hit negative 2. I can have negative 2.0000000001, but not negative 2. So anything except that negative 2.